guys, welcome back to my channel. Now, much like what the title of this video says, today I'm going to do an unboxing of a subscription box from Japan. Now, this is not the first time that I will be doing this because I've done it before and I've actually received such great feedback from you guys. So I thought, why not do it again? And so I've been searching for yet another Japanese subscription service that I can try and this is where I've discovered Zenpop.jp. Basically, Zenpop is a Japanese company that is based in Osaka and today they have 14 boxes Boxes, namely the Japanese sweets pack that has 15 snacks inside, the Japanese ramen and sweets mix pack that has 2 to 3 ramen or noodles along with 6 to 8 Japanese snacks. Third one is their Japanese ramen pack which has 7 items of ramen inside and lastly their Japanese stationery which will include 10 fun items. Now I must say that I was really interested in their Japanese stationery box because I've been into journaling a lot lately but anyway that's a discussion for later. Now the cool thing about Zenpop is that they offer free international shipping and you can choose a plan that's only for a month, 3 months, 6 months or even 12. The cost of a Zenpop box starts at $30 a month but of course if you subscribe for longer months you get to save even more. Another interesting feature of Zenpop is that their service is similar to the Japanese Fukubukuro which means lucky bag or mystery bags. So this means that you won't know specifically what's inside the box until you receive it. So it can be some sort of surprise. Nevertheless, they assure you that they carefully select the items that they are sending every month. Now as for the pack that I will be unboxing from Zenpop, I wanted to try something different so that you know I won't only show you guys just some Japanese snacks. And that's why I ordered from them their ramen and sweets mix pack. So let's open it up. We have two sheets of paper right here but actually before I read this I just want to do a quick count because like what they said on the website I should receive two or more bowls of ramen as well as at least six snacks so yeah let's do a quick count have one ramen right here two ramen and then should be six snacks at least six snacks so one two three four five six yep six snacks all in order how should i do this i think i should try the ramen later what i will try first are the snacks but actually oh yeah before i proceed with that let's just read what the sheet they sent me is it's indicated right here some of their content details and social media accounts and at the back is just some more added information and they even like shared this original manga hmm quite cute and as for the other sheet like what I expected it to be it contains all the information about the snacks and ramen bowls that they have sent me so yeah oh. it's quite helpful <laughs> maybe I should read this as I go on and try the snacks that they sent me by the way one awesome thing that I noticed that they did for this guide is that they also indicated some important ingredients so that maybe you know if you have allergies you will know beforehand like for example for this snack right here they mentioned how it includes dairy and soy this is really helpful especially because you know most of these packagings are in Japanese I mean Google Translate isn't really that accurate in a sense but yeah let's finally get on with it so I'm just gonna pick a random snack right here and like what I said earlier earlier I'm gonna try the ramen for later because you know I have to boil some water and I'm a bit lazy to do that right now anyway first up is this one according to the guide this one is apparently called as chocolate monaca oh actually I'm a bit blind I didn't see that there's like an English text right there as I can also see from the packaging outside it looks like a wafer snack mm, it smells so good this is how it looks like and if I didn't break it it would look as big as this one so yeah kind of makes me feel like I'm looking at a Kit Kat that's good the chocolate is really light to the taste like it's quite airy and yeah pair it with the crispy wafer and it's quite an enjoyable snack there's nothing too special about it but it's the kind of snack that you would like to put inside your bag so that you know you can eat it later on in the day I mean it's quite okay and the flavor is nice as well second snack that we're going to try is this one which looks like a cookie is it a cookie it's a biscuit I don't know anyway so this one is called as oh wait maybe it has English characters on it no no English at all so this is the mochi mugi sesame senbei from what I recall senbei is Japanese for rice crackers 
Lumparak. As for mochi mugi, I don't know what that means, so it says that mochi mugi is a kind of barley. It is sometimes added to rice to make it fluffy, chewy, and full of fiber. I'm not sure, but I think the number 24 right here means that there are 24 pieces of this. Is it 24? Yeah, I think it's 24. That's hard. Definitely a senbei. Yeah, it's much like most of the crackers that I've tasted here in Japan. So it's a bit salty with that added flavor of sesame seeds and stuff. But other than that, I think the barley flavor was very mild. Like I couldn't taste much of it at all. So it almost borders on being plain. But still, it's quite a fun thing to snack on. Good. As for the third snack that I'm going to try, it's going to be this milk chocolates from Meiji. I've already tasted some Meiji chocolates and I've actually already seen this variant before in stores but I haven't really tried it so it's quite nice that they've sent this one. So this is how small one QB is. It's a bit hard. Oh, now it's slowly melting. Mmm, that's good. Yeah, I mean, you can never really go wrong with Meiji chocolates. I mean, they're just so good. But yeah, I kind of like that part where it's like rock hard at first inside my mouth but then it slowly starts melting away and it's such a joy to eat. I think the fact that it's also in cubes kind of makes it more fun to eat. Now I just did some research because I got too excited and I wanted to order more of these QB chocolates online. But yeah, so I found out that there's a special reason why they're in cubes because apparently the shape as well as the special coating that it has helps prevent the chocolates from melting too fast, both from your hands and from inside the pack. Now as for the fourth snack, we are going to try this one which looks like candies. Wait, plum? Plum? Plum candies? I like plum. But yeah, here's how it looks like. You see those plums? I think those are plums. It's called as ume no tane. I don't know if I said it correctly but it says ume no tane or sour chewables. Yeah, it's plum. Ume means plum. And in this case, they are sour pickled plum. Oh no. I'm gonna have a bad time with this one. Well, let, let's see, let's see, because you know, this is Japan. They almost always make things that taste really good. It also says here that ume or plum is a very classic Japanese flavor. I mean, I bet it is. I know that a lot of Japanese people really like plum, not only in their s snacks, but also like in their meals, because I think I remember buying, or I mean, I didn't buy it, but I remember seeing one in stores, for example, like in those rice balls or onigiri. You know how most onigiri have like uh, meat inside, but then I saw an onigiri one time where in the only content inside which was just one plum, and I was like, why? So anyway, let's just, let's just get on and taste this one. Plum, let's be open-minded about this island. Let's be open-minded. I don't taste anything yet. Quite sweet still. Mm -hmm. The plum taste is seeping through. Oh wow. It's sour for sure. But it's hard to talk. The sourness is going away bit by bit now. I'm biting onto it now because it's already getting softer. As I melted away the outer coating that it has. Now it's chewy. Oh my god, it's so good. I guess I like plum now. Only this particular kind of plum. I like it. I'm sorry for speaking while eating, but I'm pleasantly surprised. So the fifth one that we have here, I think, is also a candy. This is what they call Haichu Mini. The fruit flavors are good by themselves, but try combining different ones and see what happens. Mmm, okay. The blue ones are soda flavor, so add a fruity flavor and enjoy fruit soda. What? That's a lot. So like what they said, this blue one is a sort of flavor and the rest are fruity. So I guess maybe let's try just eating one fruity flavor first. I picked this pink one. Definitely tastes like strawberry. The purple one is grape. The other one, it is lemon. According to this illustration, the pink one was not strawberry. It's apple. Now let's mix the blue soda. Mm, has a very bubbly fun taste in my mouth. There is literally a party going on inside. And now we're on to our last snack in the box and it's yet another candy. It's also from Meiji. Chelsea Butterscotch. Chelsea has been making Japanese hard candy since 1971 and you can see that the design sense hasn't changed much. It does have like a very old 
this sign. This could definitely be something that a grandma would give you from her purse. So the packaging here is designed in a way that it will easily slid in and out. Oh, by the way, it's a hard candy. It's not the kind of butterscotch that is chewy. It's definitely the typical butterscotch where in that buttery sweet flavor just melts inside your mouth. But yeah, all in all, those snacks were so much fun to eat. And I think all of them, all of them are things that I haven't tried or have seen before. So it's quite an enjoyable discovery and unboxing if you ask me. Now we only have two things left and those of course are the two ramen bowls. This one. Now I have to go and start, hmm, yeah, I have to go and start boiling some water now. I think I'm gonna try this big one first. This one is called a Shio Yakisoba. And Yakisoba is usually eaten at home or at an izakaya or a Japanese pub. And it is also often eaten at stalls during festivals. Now it says here that Shio means salt. So this is like a version of salt yakitsoba and it uses a simple salty sauce instead of the rich sugary sauce that is normally used. Yeah, that's true because usually from what I know yakitsoba has like that brownish look on it. And this guy they have also given me instructions on how I can cook this. Next up, we have to drain the water from inside and thankfully, even if you don't have a strainer, this packaging already has a built-in one. Let's see. So yeah, here's the final product. I'm quite excited to taste it, especially because it smells so good. And I haven't had dinner yet, so this is very timely. I also want to do it like how the Japanese do it, wherein they slurp in the noodles because in a way they told me that it's like the best way to appreciate the food. I'll try. I'm actually not good at slurping. Let's dig in. Oh my god. This is so good. I mean, it doesn't have a very bold flavor like most yakisoba dishes, but the mildness and saltiness of this one really works. And it's still quite sticky. Even this vegetable bits that they have tastes so fresh and good. I mean, obviously it's not fresh. You see, that's the amazing thing about Japanese instant noodles. Like, they are instant noodles, but they don't taste like it. It's so different from the instant noodles in my country or even more different than the instant noodles that you would buy in Western countries like in the US or even in Europe. Definitely a huge thumbs up to this one. Highly recommend. Thank you Zenpa. I found a new kind of noodle that I like in Japan. And lastly, we have the second or last noodle bowl. This is an Osaka ramen and it has a sweet and salty soup and the local Osaka grown onion, Senshu onion, is also used. Now according to the instructions here, preparing this one is a lot easier than the yakisoba because it's basically how I would normally prepare my instant noodles. I don't see anything that says spicy. What Mr. Mr. <laughs> what the issue? Oh my god, what is that? Okay, enough, enough, enough Google Translate. And now here's the Osaka ramen. By the way, I was nervous that it would be spicy because the packaging looks like it was red. But no, it's like a deep brown soup. Wait, I'm so afraid that it will fall, but yeah, like... Can you see? So I don't think this will be spicy at all, which is good for me because I can't handle spicy things. Oh my god! It's hot. I don't know how to eat noodles. Oh, it's so hot. I'm so scared now. This one is so good. It has like a sweet and salty soup base. I don't think it's exactly like soy sauce base. Okay, I stand corrected. It's definitely shoyu based because I definitely taste the soy sauce broth in it. There are also definitely hints of onion in here like what they mentioned in the guide. So that's all for the snacks and ramen that I got from this Zen Pop box. 
and yeah honestly that was so much fun so if you ask me if a zen pop box is worth it then yes it is after all as from what you have seen so far they have sent me a lot of fun and delicious snacks and ramen which is true to their claim that they always handpick the items that they're sending out to their subscribers so in a way it shows that they really think carefully about the things that they're sending out not to mention that they always have a new team every month and the theme for the box that i got was mostly centered on osaka so these were snacks and ramen that are quite popular in that district with that said no matter if you're into japan or not if you're someone who simply wants to be pleasantly surprised by new and amazing snacks that are not from your own country then definitely subscription boxes like this are the thing for you if not these are also nice things to give away to your friends as gifts so if you're interested or if i manage to pick your curiosity even for just a tiny bit you can check out the links below that will lead you to zenpop as well as to their page wherein they usually post some of their promos or deals all in all i hope you guys have enjoyed this unboxing video of zenpop and if you guys also have some time i hope you would leave some comments down below by letting me know your thoughts of this box as well as any suggestions that you might have thank you so much again and i'll see you guys next week bye